Hey folks, welcome back. Uh, here for the on a Saturday morning here where I'm located. I wanted to talk to you today briefly about some best practices and creating a report template for folks to get started with. So um, we were doing some uh, run-throughs this week of uh, some things we would potentially do for a uh, paginated report class that we would make available to everyone. And one of the best practices we talked about, I think is a really good idea for people to think about as they start building paginated reports and then having others in their organization start building these as well, is having a report template to get started with. Now, uh, because patching reports can can take on so many different uh, attributes as people go and create them in terms of the different visuals and uh, actions that they want people to do when they're viewing the report, um, the idea of a template is really more focused on having that company look and feel. So having a very well-formatted report that is optimized for uh, the particular type of uh, output you're looking to get there. Now, by default, when you're working with paginated reports, you, you, you'll you note that often where I see people run into challenges is they are building a report uh, and they want it to be optimized for printing, but they find that they run into these challenges where uh, it's, you know, they're getting blank sheets of paper or they're it's running off of what they would think is an 8.5 by 11 if they're using letter it's, uh, letter paper in their printer or for their uh, outputted PDF or other document. So I think one of the nice things about this uh, this idea of creating a template is it doesn't have to be anything uh, overly complex in terms of what you initially create, but rather it's just a starting point where every new report going forward, you don't have to worry about uh, the header and footer, you don't have to worry about the margins, things like that. It's just an easy way to get started with this when you start going and creating additional reports in your organization. And as other people in your organization want to get started with Report Builder, it's a great way to give them a template to get started with, as opposed to just starting from the blank campus. So I have Open Power BI Report Builder here. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to save this uh, locally. So I'm going to save this to my PC. I'll save it up here on the desktop, and I'm going to call this... Uh, Report template. Okay. So, I'm actually going to walk through some of the stuff that we uh, were thinking about for this uh, for this workshop. Uh, so you're getting kind of a sneak preview of this, but this is a great way to, for you to get started as well. So, the first thing I want to do here is I want to look at my report properties. So if I right click here and go to my report properties, and to get to your report properties again, you just Click it, right click in the gray area out uh, to so your report. And you can see here, you know, the page setup. Like, how exactly do you want this output to look, or what are you optimizing for? So, right now, uh, my page units are in inches. And again, if you're overseas or you're in a country outside the US, very often you're going to be using centimeters as opposed to inches. And I can choose portrait or landscape. So, I'm, I'm going to be doing this specifically for a portrait uh, style report. And then my paper size is letter. So, 8.5 and, and 11. So, if it's 8.5 by 11, then I want my margins to be a half inch each. And that'll mean I have uh, I have seven and a half inches essentially to work with on my report canvas when I'm developing. So I want to make sure when I'm adding items here for my ruler, it doesn't go beyond that seven and a half inches because otherwise it'll end up spilling into a second sheet of paper if it expands out beyond that. So I have here a half inch each for the left, right, and top and bottom margins, okay? And so I ha once I have all of that done, I can click OK, all right? And then for my size, I want to say uh, in terms of the, I want the, my width to be starting with 7.5, like I mentioned. So that will give me a good indication here of exactly where the edge of my report should go should not go past. And this is really important, again, if you're using tables or things like that, and you think that they're going to expand out and become wider, this is where you run into challenges here in terms of it potentially going beyond that 7.5 inches and then spilling off the page. Now, again, you can just do things like change the page orientation, but that's something to keep in mind. And then for my height, I'm going to have my height be 2 inches for now. And so that's what I start with. And again, this just gives me some room to start adding assets to my report when I start building my report. And you want to get rid of any of trailing any of that trailing space there once you actually go to uh, finalize your report. Because again, the idea is that oftentimes people leave some blank space there, not realizing that could, that can mean it would go and spill off of the page uh, if I end up leaving that blank space because of the way the page pagination works. 
So, okay, so I've done that piece now, and one of the things that often trips people up as well is that they don't realize that by default a page header is not there. You have this title, but you, and you have a page footer, but you don't have a page header. So to add a page header, I'm actually going to right-click and say add a page header. So now I have a header here in my report. And the first thing I want to do here, and if I click on this, you can see here the properties of my header. And that's another thing to keep in mind, is when you click on these different areas, you see the properties pane updates here and to get to the properties pane if you don't already see it you'd click on view and make sure this properties box is checked but depending on where you click you see the property of that individual area I mean this is the property of the text box this is the property the body of the report this is the report properties and here's my page header properties and so you see here I have a height of one inch for my header so that's how big my header is and then if I click on the footer you see right now my height is 0.45 inches I'm actually going to change that to 0.5 all right. So now I have my page header and my page footer here. So first thing I want to do is I want to drag this text box up into my header. So I'm going to drag it anywhere in here. Then you'll see this will now repeat on every page with my header once I, uh, once I add some text here or whatever I want to do with my report title. Now, to put this in a specific location, uh, I can actually go and in my uh, properties here, you see you have the position uh, asset here. So I can say, okay, what position do I want this in my report? And when you hear people talk about pixel perfect, it isn't just a uh, marketing slogan. It is, no, this allows you to adjust everything down to the last pixel on your report and make sure it truly does lay out and match up exactly what you want. So you see here, I changed that. Now my title is up in the zero. Uh, zero inches both ways, so it's in the upper left-hand corner of my report. So, in terms of the width of my text box, so right now if I click on here, I can see that my uh, the location, then the size, I have my width is 5.5 inches and my height is 0 0.5 inches. All right, So I'm actually just going to change this to 6.5 inches. And again, you see it expands and gives me a little bit more space here. And so with this particular box once i have this selected i can make some choices in here in terms of saying okay well, what kind of color do i want my font to be for the text i put in my text box what is the um, the size and type of font that i want to use so here on the right hand side you see i have here all the properties around what i can do uh, with this and i can say okay i'm going to actually make this uh 20 point font and my font weight is going to be bold so you see, you have a number of choices there. Oh, not extra bold, bold. And then the bottom, the style of the text box. So this is an interesting one where people often are like, oh, I want to have a border around this. So I go up to my border style. And then for the bottom of it, I'm just going to have a solid line. Okay. And then what exactly do I want to show in this text box? So if I go in here and I right click on it, I can choose expression. I could also get to this to the text box properties, but I want to do an expression. What an expression, I've talked about expressions, I think, in previous videos. But basically, I want to just have something dynamically appear for each individual report. So if I go to expression, I have my expression builder window. And what I want to do here is use one of the built-in fields. Now, the built-in fields can be a little tricky at times just because um, some of these built-in fields were designed for the server and not the service, so they aren't relevant. But this one is, I actually wanted to show the report name each time. So I have globals, report name here. So what will happen is every time my report runs, I will see that report name when it renders. Now, tricky thing about this is you don't actually see the report name render until you have it uploaded to the service. So that's something just to keep in mind. It'll show blank when you try and run this the very first time. But that's actually going to show when you go load it up to the service. And so just keep that in mind when you're previewing the report. All right. So then the next thing I want to do is I can have a second text box. So I want to insert an additional text box. So I can do this a couple of ways. I'm just going to do it up here. I'm going to say, okay, insert text box, and then I'm going to draw a little text box there. And then in terms of my alignment, I can actually choose uh, what the alignment is for this particular item. Uh, set the following properties for this new text box. So. When I talk about the uh, vertical alignment, I have it in the middle, all right? 
And then in terms of the name, so this is an interesting thing to keep in mind. So when you actually put elements onto your canvas, a default name is given for them. And oftentimes, I, I will say, I cop to this. I very rarely go and actually change these. But it does make it harder if you have a lot of elements later on to figure out what text box 35 is. So here, I'm just going to rename this to report subtitle. And you can't have spaces in between the names here because they won't save properly. But here, we just have the... Uh, and it also has to be unique. You can't have multiple items in your report called the same thing. So I'll just save out of there, and it just saves it by default there. So then in terms of the location with this, what I want to do is, again, I want the location to be 0 inches to the left, and then 0 0.5 towards the top. So then you see it lines up nicely underneath my other box. And then the size here, I want this to be 6.5, and, and then... 0.3. And so for now, I'm not actually going to put any uh, text in here because, again, depending on the report that I'm creating going forward, I would have a specific text or item I want to add, but it gives me a nice area to put my subtitle in as I move forward with my template. So the next thing I want to do is I want to add an image up here. So I'm going to right click again, and I can do insert image, and then here's the, the name of the image. So what I want to do is I want to change this to my company logo. And since I'm just importing this image from my uh, from my machine here, I'm going to do import because it's going to end up being an embedded image. Desktop. And it's actually not a JPEG I'm going to use. It's a PNG file. And there's Pagine Report Bear right there. So Pagi is the uh, image name that I'm going to add here. And then in terms of the uh, the I can set the size and the, if I want here, and it's just going to fit proportional, so I'm going to leave this as is. I hit OK. You see there's good old paginated report bear there. So in terms of the location, I'm going to want this to be 6.7 inches from the left and 0 inches from the top. And then the size, I want this to be a little bit bigger for old paginated report bear. 8.8 .8 inches width, 0 0.8 inches height. So there he is. Pageant Report Bear there. Now my company logo is here. And then in the footer, what I want to do here, I already have a text box for this with the execution time. So in terms of the alignment, I want the text alignment to be to the left. I don't want it to be the right. So you see here I selected that, and I actually marked in terms of the properties what I want this uh, to be with the text alignment. Uh, the border style with this, similar to what we did earlier, the border style for the top, I want it to be solid. So now I have that as solid. The name for this item, I'm going to change it uh, to say footer. And in terms of the location where I want it to be, I want this to be all the way over to the left. And I want it to be 0 0.1 inches towards the top there. And then the size of my item, I'm going to have this be 7.5 inches and 0 0.4 inches in height. Okay, So you see how that fills that box out nicely? So it already has an expression here where it's supposed to be, when you run it, it shows the execution time. That's, again, another built-in field. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to um, use a uh, more robust expression here, and I'm just going to copy and paste it in. But you'll see here if I double-click on this, I get the value there. I can go to this box. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just paste this in. And it's another expression, but you see what you can do here is I can actually do a combination of text and the expressions that I want to show on here. So it's going to say it's generated at such and such a time, which is UTC time, and then the, uh, the page numbers out of how many total pages. So if I click OK, have it there, you see it changes to an expression box specifically. So again, because the Power BI service generates things in UTC time, I'm just going to show it as UTC time here. So at this point, what I can do is I can preview the report by running it. And I've done this in previous videos. But if I just go here and click Run, it's not going to be a very exciting report necessarily. But you see, ta-da, that's what my report looks like right now. Now, how would this look on a printed page? Well, one of the nice things about Report Builder, and again, uh, if I haven't chatted about this before, this is a good reminder. 
that you can change to see what it would look like in a printed page. So if I go to print layout, you'll see there that's what it's going to look like when you print this report out. So this is the thing, again, you're creating a template for this portrait style document. And this is really important in terms of when you first see that without this, you think, oh my gosh, I'm not doing this right. How's it going to look? Well, no, if I have my print layout here. It does a great job of showing exactly how this is going to look, the time that the report was generated at, and the date, and the UTC time, page 101. There's my logo. And this is a great starting point. Again, you don't see the report name here yet, but if I were to load this up to the service, I'd be able to see that. This is a great starting point for me now going forward. So you'll see in future videos, I use this template as kind of a starting place as I go through some, uh, some, of the assets, some of the items you can do here in the body of the report beyond what we've covered so far. Hopefully you found this helpful. Uh, I think it's a great starting place. Again, feel free to leave comments uh, in the uh, below the YouTube video after you view it. And thanks very much for watching.